We've all heard of people encountering Bigfoot-like creatures in the woods, but what of those cases where people encounter them in their homes or at their workplaces? There are a number of cases on record in which people claim that they saw a Bigfoot enter and exit their home or, or they encountered them at their workplace or they were attacked by them at their workplace. In this video, I will go over some of these uh, cases. In February 1925, in Forest County, Mississippi, a woman recalled the night a strange bipedal creature entered her home. She was five years old at the time. She, along with her two older sisters, ages seven and nine, were in bed with their mother. Their father had gone into town by horse on an overnight business trip. Late in the evening, they began to hear the family dog barking. It soon became more intense, bordering on frantic. At some point, they could hear the dog running away, and the howling and barking faded off into the distance. They got the sense that the dog had been frightened by something. Just then, they began to hear someone moving around on the wooden front porch. It attempted to open the front door, but could not budge it as they had leaned a chair against it earlier when the dog began barking. The sisters and mother remained in bed, absolutely paralyzed with fear as the door continued to be fiddled with. Soon the chair gave way and the whatever it was entered the house. They could hear it breathing. It seemed to sniff the air at intervals. The creature, which they described as tall, with long arms, walking on two feet and very hairy, coarse and long hair, and smelling of sulfur, entered the room and proceeded to lay down across the foot of the bed at a right angle to them. It laid itself atop their legs, and its body hung over both sides of the bed. The women wanted to know what the creature was doing, but were too afraid to raise up and look. It remained there for a period of time. The girls could feel their legs falling asleep. No doubt its weight was cutting off the circulation to their legs. Eventually it got up and left without incident. When it exited the home, it left the door open, and the witness recalled that it was quite chilly that night, and they could feel the cold breeze on them blowing into the room. Nobody was brave enough to get up and close it, fearing that it might be standing on the porch waiting for them. Thankfully, they never saw or heard the creature again. Southern Illinois, July 1958. A young girl playing in her home one sunny morning claims she encountered a strange creature that looked like a cross between a jackrabbit and a Bigfoot. I was playing in the living room alone and heard a strange sound in the next room, like cardboard boxes tumbling. I got up and slowly looked around the corner of the door, and there he was, the strangest creature I ever saw, standing in my house, up against the wall. She noted that the creature, which she guessed is standing around six feet tall and weighing around 200 pounds, was only six feet from her in the room. He almost seemed to be hiding as he had his nose a few inches from the wall. He was totally covered with white hair. His form was that of a man, but not his appearance. His eyes weren't in front like ours, but on the side of his head like a rabbit. His nose was human, but covered with very short, very thick white hair. The funny thing was, he just stood there and let me look at him, and I was too scared, too curious to move myself. I looked him up and down, all over taking in everything. His eyes were red with a black dot in the center surrounded by white. He had five fingers and toes. His fingernails were dark red, long and pointed, almost triangular in shape. His toenails were also red and pointed. But his big toe was odd, hard to describe. 
The toenail somehow curved over it. I didn't see ears or a mouth, but I'm sure they were there. His chest was odd, not flat or muscular, but more rounded rather, like a Coke can, and tapered toward his neck and loins. The witness claimed she stared at him for around five minutes, taking in his odd appearance. His hair was almost a dirty white and matted, kind of shaggy around his feet. There was no odor, I guess. The hair length was maybe five or six inches long. His whole face was covered like the hair on a rabbit's face. The only place that didn't have hair was his eyes, fingernails and toenails that I could see. Finally, my gaze went to the one eye looking at me, and I thought, Who? What are you? The look he gave me made my blood freeze. I ran to where my mom was. I couldn't talk. I was white as a sheet. I drug her to where I was. He was gone. He never moved while I was there. I swear this is all true. I'll never forget. Never. The witness claimed she had nightmares about the creature for many years after the encounter. So what did she encounter? A Bigfoot? A giant human-sized rabbit? or something in between, a hybrid that paranormal encrypted researchers have yet to give a name. It seems the creature was aware of her, and she claims that she felt a sudden sense of fear or danger as she looked at it. This might be warranted given the next case I will be discussing. Monday, October 3rd, 1977. Security guard Donnie Hall, 27 was making his rounds at John's Nursery in Apopka in Central Florida when he claims a creature entered the building and came at him. He described the creature as a ten-foot-tall hairy beast with a chest full of reddish-gray fur and small ears. It was walking on two legs. It viciously attacked him, ripping off his shirt before Hall opened fire at it with his gun. The bullets seemed to have no effect on the hairy giant which ran off into the night. Hall notified police about the event. An agent with the Florida Game and Fresh Water Commission went out to the location the next day and discovered tracks around the nursery. However, he determined that they were man-made. The Orlando Sentinel Star spoke with Marion County Sheriff Don Moreland about the sighting scoffed at the idea that a hairy monster had broken into the nursery. I've been in law enforcement for 20 years here, and I don't remember any reports of monsters. Flying saucers, yes, but I don't recall any monsters. If Hall's story is correct, and he did shoot at this Bigfoot creature, and it had no effect on it, and it managed to get away, um, you have to ask yourself, what are we dealing with here? I know there are people out there that believe that Bigfoot is a, a type of animal, a flesh and blood animal that has that science has yet to uh, recognize. But I don't know if you can shoot this thing uh, with bullets and it somehow manages to get away and, and is never found. There's no body found. And you have to ask yourself, you know, what can do that? Certainly, if you shoot a bear, it's going to go down. Pretty much any animal, if you shoot it, it's going to go down. But apparently this thing, there are lots of people who claim to have shot a Bigfoot and they don't, and they don't, it doesn't have any effect on them. So, I don't know, are we really dealing with a flesh and blood animal? Or is it something else, or is something else going on with this phenomenon? Um, I don't know. Um, it... I'm sure some skeptics will say that oh, it was just a guy in a costume, but again, if it was just a dude in a costume pulling a prank, I'm sure Hall's bullets would have had some effect on him. They probably would have stopped him in his tracks. Um, on the other hand, I guess you can come at it from this. Uh, maybe Hall was just a really lousy shot, and maybe none of the bullets actually hit the, uh, the creature, but I find that really doubtful. So anyways, 